Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to look at temporary table types. We're going to go over variable, local, and global. I hope you enjoy this video. Let us first begin with the table variable. Let us review table variable. Use declare, not create. What does that mean? Notice on line 11, we say declare at table as table. We don't say create table. So it must begin with declare. Line three, can use primary key constraint, must be in line. So notice here on line 13, notice I have a primary key and this is considered in line in the table definition. This is the only way to create an index for a declared table. Use a default value. Notice on line 16, we say default true on a bit column. And on line 18, default get date for a date time. We can also use a check constraint. Notice on line 15, I say check where customer is less than 20. Now on line 13, we're using a unique identifier. Notice I say default value equals new sequential ID. So we can either use new ID or new sequential ID for its default value. The table name must begin with the at symbol. And line eight, the declared table variable, it's a real table, it's not a memory variable. Several years ago, before I knew this, I would always say a declared table is a memory variable because it seemed like I would not put very much data in it and it behaves like a variable. A variable I thought was in memory, but the declared table is actually a real table in SQL Server. Let us look at scope. When I declare a table and I execute it, what I highlighted was scope. And as soon as I get done executing scope, the table is gone. Now you'll notice here, I have an insert statement below that. Just to prove that, notice I will execute the table declare, and then I will try to do insert separately, and notice it says, uh, I don't think so. But if I execute these together, notice that they execute. But this would be my scope, and as soon as I'm done with it, on line 28, at table is gone. Notice on line 28, I'm going to do a delay for one second, and then I'm going to show you the contents of that variable. Notice that we did the insert statement, three rows were inserted, and here is the value. And I waited. If I just want to come down and show you the contents of that again, you'll notice that is no longer in scope. At table is gone. In our second example, I will try to demo begin tran and rollback. I will try to delete a record from that variable table where the customer ID is 17. Transactions are not supported on this data type. Notice I will declare the table. I will insert some data. I will show you the data. And then I will do that begin trans, delete one record and then do a rollback. And then I will show you the table again. Let's execute this. Notice on line 20, I said it's select star from table. Notice I got three rows, 15, 16, and 17. On line 27, I said delete from at table where customer ID is 17. Notice in the second set, 17 is gone. So the delete actually happened. But on line 30, because we were inside of a transaction, I wanted to roll back. It does not support transactions for declare at table. They're not supported. On the first step, I told you that a declare table variable is a real table. It's not a memory variable. I'm going to prove that to you now. Notice I will declare at table as table and I have some columns, but I cannot go through information schema dot tables and find it by name. I have to do a subquery. And I have to locate that table name by the name of the columns. Notice I did this subquery here. Let's execute this for information schema. 
Notice that I get the table name pound AD 6268-6F. It is a base table. It is a table. I can also go through sys.tables and guess what? I have to do the same thing. I have to go through the column names in order to find that. Let's execute both of these select statements. And notice that we have a new name for our table. And through SysTables, I get the same table name. And notice its object ID is a negative value. If I execute this again, notice that both of these values change. So now we're at 71, ends with 71, ends with C7. So as we stay inside of scope, everything is available to us. But as soon as I drop out line 27, it removes that record from our sys tables. And to prove to you that that table is gone immediately as we get out of scope, I will now try to go find that table by the name of it, and I will execute this command. And notice it comes back null. And here I just change the select statement and use a like, and I use it wildcard characters. So that does prove to you when I'm in scope, it is available. As soon as scope is gone, the table is removed. In our last step, I will declare a table as table. I will then insert three rows. I will then show you the contents of those three rows. And then I will try to tr truncate that table. Truncate means remove all the data. This is not supported for declare table. Incorrect syntax. And there you have declare table. Let us look at local temporary table. These are names that begin with a single pound. Notice that I said create table pound purchase order. So these are called local temporary tables. Now the scope is just this single window. I'm going to show you in just a moment. I'm going to close this window and it will actually drop this temporary table. So let's create. Well, let's before we do that, let's come over to another window and see are there any tables that start with purchase order? And you can see that there's none. If I come back to this one and say create this table and then come back over here and notice that I get the name of the tables. Now you'll notice here on table name, you got dot, dot, dot. And what that means is this column is long and it has a value of 11. So pound purchase order, 116 underscores and then a sequence number. Now if I were to drop this table, if I come over here and say drop table, it's now gone. If I execute, this, remember that number was 11. I execute this, notice they're gone now. If I create this table again, notice that number had changed. Let's uh, go see what that would look like. And now it's 12. So that is just a sequential number. So your max length for your table name can be no more than 116 characters. Now, a moment ago, I told you if I close this window down, it will also remove this table, this local table from the database because the scope for this table is local. It's local to this one window. Let's close this and see what happens. So no, I don't want to save. And now execute this. It's gone. So that table is gone. There's nothing about that. Now, if I come back here and say, uh, New query, paste that in, and try to select from there. That table's gone. I'd have to come and create this again, and then I could come over here and do a query, and I get to see those values. Now, we already know that this is a sequence number at the end, and now we're at uh, 13. So it just keeps incrementing uh, the table name. So every time we create a, a local temporary table, it just gets the name that we give it, all the way out to 116 characters and then a serial number. Now my table is created and I'm in the same environment. My scope is this window. I can do commands independently. Notice that I can say insert into pound purchase order. Let's do that. Insert two records. Notice I can now independently do a select statement. And I have another window. 
And that other window has that same SQL statement, select star from pound purchase order. See how it's that same statement? But when I try to execute it here, it'll come up and say, I don't know that. Well, was purchase order created in this window? No, it was created in this window. So this is the only window that has access to that table. In this second window, I have some additional commands to alter the table, to create index, and to even drop the table. But they are unaccessible because they are not in the scope. I just showed you I tried to do the select star from that table and it came up errors. I cannot alter that table. I'm not in the right scope. Cannot create an index. Not in the right scope. But if I bring these over into our first window that has the appropriate scope, I can alter it. First of all, let's see what's in there. I can put another column called customer zip code into that table. And notice uh, customer zip code here. And I can create a unique index on that on the customer three. So what we're proving here is we can alter a table. We can add indexes and indexes are supported. Notice when I did the select statement, I had a three. If I just try to come up here and insert another three, I should get a violation error. And notice duplicate key, can't do it. So this right here works. So what we've been able to see is a pound purchase order table, a local temporary table, behaves just like a real table except the scoping. The scoping is very minute. It is only for the scope that created it. Not only can we see tables from a SQL statement, we can also see them from the Object Explorer. Notice that we can come down to tempdb, temporary table, and notice here's our purchase order table, and this is our current version. Remember, longest table name, 116 characters, plus a sequence number. Let us now look at global temporary tables. Now these are table names that begin with two pound symbols. So notice here that I will say create table two pound symbols purchase order. Before we create this object, let's see if we have any tables in our database. Notice it's uh, nice and clean. So let's create this table and notice that these will execute independently. So once table is created, I can come and execute an insert statement. And now, a little bit different than the local, I can actually come over here and say new query. Let's go harvest this select statement. And I can actually, in another window, I can actually generate a SQL statement. Now remember in local, I had to do everything inside of my one file, my one window. This was the scope. But with global, as long as this window is open, then I can use this anywhere. An example, let's open up another SQL Server. Let's connect. And now we have a third instance of SQL Server running. Now what I can do is come over here and take this select statement and come to this new window and execute this. And notice I get some results. Now, we could not do this in local. Local said, I don't think so. Where is the original window? So that is the only thing that's different inside of global. Now, when I close this window, the one that created it, the originator, you will notice that everything will shut down. So for instance, let's come here. Let's shut it down, say no. Now we will try to execute the select statement and it's saying, oh, I don't know who you are. And then I can come back to our third window, execute this and nothing is available there. And I can go to our syst and schema, information schema, and they are both gone as well. Another item of interest for the global temporary table is when we create a table and I go query it from the database, notice the name of the table is just a normal table. The object ID is a positive number. And when I looked at the temporary tables, it doesn't have all those underscores and some unique identifier. So it appears to behave a little bit differently at the tempdb level. And there you have global temporary table. And there's another video of SQL Server. Temporary tables are very, very important. I hope you were able to use this video and build some skills. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. And of course, if you're a frequent viewer, subscribing would be pretty cool too. And that's all I have. I'll see you back in my next video. Have a good weekend.